Hey guys, welcome to the Hacked Existence tutorial on building out the DNS drive-by. You can find out more about this at dnsdriveby.com, but basically this is a device from Alex Lind over at Lind Labs that functionally achieves the same thing as an Apple AirTag, but does it a little bit differently. It utilizes something more akin to a red team tactic of DNS exfiltration. So by utilizing this technique, it makes it much more anonymous, much more harder to track. Um, and basically the way it works is under the hood, we have the Wemos D1 Mini. This is the heart of the operation. It's an ESP8266 chipset. And once it's powered on and running, basically it drops into a loop where it evaluates all the Wi-Fi networks that are in range, specifically looking for Wi-Fi networks that don't require authentication. So think of things like captive portal networks at an airport, a hotel, a coffee shop, or just wireless networks that have been configured without requiring a password. Once it finds one of these networks, it associates to it and then queries the Neo 6M GPS radio here with this real nice ceramic antenna on top to get its location on the globe. So unlike the AirTag, the DNS drive-by is aware of its own location on the surface of the Earth. Next, it takes those GPS coordinates and creates a string where it appends the SSID of the wireless network that it has associated to and then prepends that to a domain name that we configure in the code. It then attempts to resolve Solve that domain name via a DNS query and what we see is even in captive portal networks quite often DNS queries are allowed straight out to the internet pre-authentication. So that DNS query will then traverse the internet and ultimately end up at a server that we own because we are the authoritative source for that domain or we can use a service like canarytokens.com that we'll use in this video that sets up all that DNS stuff for us so we don't have to set up and maintain that server. Once we receive that DNS request we can extract the subdomain and that will give us the GPS coordinates of the DNS drive-by along with the SSID of the Wi-Fi network that it was connected to and some relative timestamp of the time when the request originated. So with all of those things combined, we can locate our device on the globe at a specific point in time. Now, because DNS by design is something that the internet protects the identity of the owner of, it makes it extremely hard to attribute ownership of a domain back to a person, uh, whereas the Apple AirTag relies on being bound to your Apple ID that is bound to your identity. Additionally, because the DNS drive-by utilizes Wi-Fi and GPS to generate DNS requests. It's not slinging BLE advertisements like the AirTag, which means you'll never get that notification on your phone that you're being followed around by the DNS drive-by. One of the other really neat features is this motion sensor that's built into the board. So we can utilize this in the code to drop this device into a low power standby mode when the device is not in motion to conserve battery. So let's jump into the build materials. All right, so the heart of this kit is the PCB that Alex Lynn designed. It's got the micro SD adapter on the board there. Um, so this is where we're going to start. To that, we're going to add four of these 10K resistors. We got a couple transistors, a little LiPo switch, and our motion sensor. And we'll slam on the Wemos D1 Mini. That's the heart of the operation. To that, we will add our 1.3 inch I to C four pin OLED display, and then the Neo 6M GPS radio. And the last thing we'll throw on there is a little JST plug. Although I would caution you guys about trying to power this with a LiPo. The first time I tried tried that I ended up frying the whole board because the power management is a little bit wonky so I typically stick to powering it through the USB-C on the D1 mini. So let's jump into putting this thing together. All right so we're going to begin by soldering the four resistors. These are 10k resistors into these four slots here denoted on the board. I'm going to drive the pins from each resistor through the holes. We'll spread the wings on the back, solder them in, and then chop them off. All right, now that we have our resistors all soldered in, the next step is to prepare the D1 Mini. We're gonna do that by taking the header pins and driving them in from the bottom. We'll solder them across the top. We'll do that on both sides. And then we'll take the header sockets. We'll stick them on the board here and here. And we'll flip this over, get those soldered in so the D1 Mini has somewhere to plug into. All right, now that we've got our D1 all mounted on there, we'll do the transistors next. And you can see on the diagram, the flat side is going to be facing the D1. All right, next we're going to solder on the motion sensor and we can see that one of the pins is a wire and one is an actual pin. The wire one is gonna go on the outside of the board. We're gonna solder those two holes and use this sticky tape to stick it to the board. All right, now we'll solder our six pin LiPo switch onto these six pins here. 
All right, next we'll plug in the four pin screen riser and get that soldered in. I'm gonna plug the screen into it to hold it in place while I solder it. All right, now I'll solder the JST connector over here to where it says JST pin. And finally, we'll solder the four pins from our Neo 6M onto their spot on the board there. And finally, the last thing that we're gonna do is jumper from the center pad to the D4 and the center pad to the D3 on the RX and the TX side, respectively. And those solder pads are what tell the D1 how to interact with the GPS radio. All right, at this point, we've got this thing all assembled. So let's jump over to the computer and we'll get the D1 flashed with the firmware. Okay, so we're gonna start by heading over to dnsdriveby.com and we're gonna follow the link to the GitHub and we'll go ahead and download the zip file of this repo. And then we'll go ahead and unzip it. And inside of the folder here, inside of source, inside of demo, we'll open up demo.ino. And I've got a fresh install of Arduino IDE here. So back over here on the GitHub, I'll go into the source. And if we look in the Arduino CLI.yaml, we'll grab this URL here. And back over in Arduino, we'll go to Arduino IDE settings and we'll add this to the additional board managers URL. And then we'll go to the boards manager and we will search for ESP8266 and we'll install that. And now we should be able to go to tools, board, and ESP8266 and we'll select the D1 mini light. All right, now that we've got our board configured, we need to configure a few libraries. So over here in the library manager, we are going to search for ESP8266 space OLED. And down here, we'll install the ESP8266 and ESP32 OLED driver for the SD1306 displays. All right, next we'll install Tiny GPS Plus. All right, and at this point, we should be able to verify our code. And we're going to see this error here about Git GPS URL. Um, specifically, it's looking at this canary token URL variable, which is in vers.h here. So over here, what we're going to do is open up a new tab and go to canarytokens.com. And we will select a DNS token. And we'll put an email address in there and create a canary token. And now we will copy this URL and we will add it here inside of double quotes. And we'll try verifying again. And at this point, we can see we've compiled this sketch successfully. So we'll go ahead and plug in the D1 Mini. And we'll go ahead and upload that. All right, now we're done uploading. We'll go take a look at the DNS drive-by. All right, so after a quick drive through downtown Phoenix, we can see that we got all of these beacons from the DNS drive-by. And we'll notice a couple things. Uh, the first one is that the map here doesn't allow you to zoom in and that we only received 11 beacons and then it stops working. And these are just because of the free tier of the Canary Tokens website. But if we go in and look at any of these beacons, we can see the GPS coordinates along with the timestamp and the SSI. ID of the network they came from. We can also export all of these beacons in CSV, load them into Google Maps and get an actual map that we can zoom in on and see the path that was traversed. So this is enough to show us that the methodology works, the device functions as described, and we're able to somewhat anonymously track the location of our DNS drive-by. All right, at this point, you should have a fully functioning and tested DNS drive-by unit. It is time to get out there and start tracking things. You should also have an understanding of how you can use DNS to send yourself beacons from unencrypted Wi-Fi. So as always, stay tuned and thanks for watching.